So I want to look at how Flowbloom could be used for more complicated tasks and this is one of the tasks I'm currently doing with my students and it's no longer a um, controlled assessment task, students can work on this at home. Um, I just thought I'd have a look at how this could go together um, using Flowbloom to solve parts of the problem just so they can get an idea of how to, to break it down. So this is a dice game, it's got a set of rules to follow. we can see the, it's the, the points for each role. Um, if they get an even number, so we can use a, a modulo for example there, if it's an odd number, subtract 5, can't go below 0, high score wins, 5 rounds, looping. I've not looked at the authorised bit, that's not really, that's beyond what we do with flow rhythm. Um, so there's some quite cool things uh, to do in here. So I've put the program together. So the first thing to look at would really be the, the actual game function. So you can see how I'm passing in the score, so we can the score can be updated. I've got two variables, roll, roll, and roll two. I've rolled random numbers, and I've done random number for six because in flow rhythm that's zero to five, and then I've added one, so you know, maybe it's one to six. Um, Prints them out. Does the mod? So if it's an odd number, we take five away. If um, puts the score below zero, we reset it to zero so it can never be low and we return the score. If it's even, they get an extra 10 points. We can then check if the two numbers are the same because doubles are always even. Yes, doubles are always even. Um, that's true, we get an extra roll and same thing, a roll of six dice and then that's added to the score and it's returned. If we look at the main function, Got our counter for our loop, 0 to 4. Okay, because so we want 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 goes. I'll add it to that counter when I print it out so it looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Initialize the starting score. There's the one call, so that'll call the function with the current score. 2 with the current score. Does the 5 rounds, keeping track of the score. If the score is at the end of the game, we go into death. So we keep rolling a dice each until one person's got a higher score. We output that score. If it's uh, player one that's the highest, player one wins, otherwise player two wins, and that's the end. So if we, uh, if we step through it, let's get our variable window open. Okay, let's step through. see we rolled a 2 and a 1 which is 3 which is an odd number so minus 5 if you look at the score it's 0 so it goes to minus 5 and then it's reset to 0 drop on next player so player 2 this time player 2 is rolled 6 and 2 so that's 8 so that's an even number but it's not a double so I add 10 to give 18 it's not a double so it returns and then if I run the rest of the game through, we've got all of the different rounds and we've got an overall score finally of uh, 0 and 63, so that poor player wins, and then a win for player 2. Run it through again just to prove it's random, 70-31, this time player 1 wins. So there's an example how we could do something a little bit complicated using Flowgrithm to teach the basics of the actual project before students attempt this in Python.